Uh, what you're about to see is a 3D representation of Gale Crater. Um, Jeff and his team at JPL provided the radar data for the topography and the geography, the, the model, um, and of course the satellite images to recreate this location in, in, a, in an accurate and authentic way. Here's Gale Crater. You can see the little roads emanating away from the base as the camera drops in. And here we are at Eagle Base. Welcome to Eagle Base. It's a small, uh, semi-permanent or permanent colony on Mars. Uh, as you can see from the overlay, it's slightly centralized, but it also has some outbuildings and lots of structures spread out over the desert. It's not just a, a big dome with people, but it's a, hopefully a thriving little community. Now, if you look out into the desert to the north, is it to the northwest? Just to the north, yeah. Over out there. in the lonely desert, you'll see a plinth, a monument, and that monument marks the spot where 105 years ago, Mars Curiosity touched down, because as of today, this is the year 2117, and there are 5,592 people living in Eagle Base. Unless and anyone's been born. Uh, no, I don't think anyone, the population count is right up here in the left. Is I don't think that has changed. Um, Jeff, perhaps you can tell us where Curiosity is now. It's somewhere over in these, these dunes or mountains? Yeah, the base is set at a place called the Murray Buttes. And uh, Curiosity today is heading up kind of in the direction of what's called Sagan Observatory uh, on, their, uh, on their map. Uh, towards those those little foothills of Mount Sharp, which is the five and a half kilometer mountain that you see right there. We also have the what we call the census manager map. So here you can see the Mount Sharp data, uh, topography data. Curiosity would be somewhere up here in this road area. And I love this view because uh, everything in the base, if you click on it, it pops up descriptions of them explaining, for example, how the colony produces oxygen and food, uh, where launch and landing takes place, what's inside that giant dome. Um, I love also that you can see the subsurface structure there. Maybe you guys can talk more about that. Yeah, uh, so the colony produces air, water, and food in a number of ways, but some centralization and some decentralization. You'll notice the dome in the center is where many of the people live, but it's also the colony's biggest reservoir of breathable air and uh, clean water. But you can see outside of the dome, if you want to zoom in, Rob, on the, there we go. There's auxiliary living quarters and also algae ponds, things like communications towers. Now these living quarters are, of course, uh, partly buried to shield the residents from radiation, but they're built around a light well so that people have daylight. I think people need daylight. So looking at the underground, underground view, you can see the main well is a little bit deep there. So this is one of the times we consulted with Jeff and his team at JPL to find out how deep you would put a well to get to a liquid aquifer on Mars. Uh, and just to be clear on that, we don't exactly know, but uh, we do believe a couple hundred meters down, uh, there's a good chance that a colony like this could find a source of liquid water. We've just got to discover evidence for water on Mars about 300 more times before we know, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm just playing around. Uh, one of the cool things was working with Unity 5.6 Alpha was it's got this cool lighting timeline, so you can just set up four lighting scenarios and just kind of toggle between them where it kind of scrubs time-lapse style to the next lighting setup. So here we can see sunrise about to take place. You see the Martian sunrise is kind of going, I think, at super speed here as the sun breaks across the mountain. And we go full day, take it over to night, and you can see... Rob, can we catch the uh, sunset? Yep, I think it's coming up right here. Sunset there you go. Is blue. Yeah, blue sunsets on Mars. On Earth, we have red sunsets, and the sky looks blue. Um, but on Mars, the sunsets are blue, and the sky looks a little red. So we also wanted to build a colony that looked like it had a little bit of history. The dome is the most recent. It's the biggest structure. But along that sort of central boulevard, you can see uh, outbuildings. And then here at the end, this is the oldie town. This is the, probably the first place that a colony was established. It's the classical sort of pods and habs and things. And behind it you can see the original landing field, but way behind that out in the desert, 
you can see the new launch facility. Rob, why don't we go there? We're going to zoom in and check that out. So the elliptical landing area here was, uh, originally we had a big long landing strip like the shuttle would use, but Jeff and his team advised that the atmosphere on Mars is so thin, you wouldn't really get a lot of uh, lift on a, on, a, on a winged body landing, like on a run, runway. So we like the lifting body shape. As you can see, here's our little, uh, our little launch vehicle sitting in its underground facility waiting to launch and um, the idea was that it would come in and land vertically sort of SpaceX style land on that elliptical area then be relocated taxi along and then go down to the underground works here where you can see it gets services refueled and gets sent back up into space so we can trigger that movie so I hope you can tell we had a lot of fun thinking planning imagining this is the world's biggest sandbox Copy, clear, come on, thank you. And now if we go back home to uh, sunny Las Vegas. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>